My name is Tanya Lee Davis, and I am a stand-up comedian of uh, nearly 30 years, and I have traveled all over the country, uh, all over the world, actually. I've been to Mount Fuji, I've gone scuba diving in three different companies, I've been up the Rocky Mountains, I have done everything, and it has been amazing. But you know what? I have never felt more disabled than being in the United Kingdom. I grew up in Canada, and I have a form of dwarfism, and I didn't let it slow me down. Right from the get-go, people underestimated me, but I did everything I could. I played every sport humanly imaginable with all the kids. I ran track. I did everything to my own ability. Uh, and that's just what I did. And it was fantastic. Uh, and I got to go all over the world. But then I come here to the UK, and I'm just like so restricted. And I started coming here in uh, 2003. I actually did um, the Edinburgh Fringe Festival and I got picked up by a manager. And he said, you want to come to the UK? And I was like, that'd be amazing. And so I got to go all over the world, like I said, and then I came here and it was just, wow. All of a sudden it was so restricting and I couldn't believe it. And I, when I started coming here in 2004, I, I couldn't believe it. All I heard, I heard people being described as, that person's confined to a wheelchair. I was told that I suffered from dwarfism. If this is suffering, you guys, you're missing out. <laughs> I'm telling you, I gotta go on. I kept hearing, uh, you can't go there, you're disabled. You can't go there. Where's your care? Or why are you by yourself? Ooh, that's against health and safety. You guys love that one, don't you? Ah. <laughs> uh. So after my first trip of traveling around the UK, it just broke me down. I actually felt emotionally derailed. And I just said, I can't come back to the UK. It is messing with my head. Because being told I can't, when my entire life I believed I can, it was like poof, mind blown. So I decided that's it, I'm done with the UK. Unfortunately, well, fortunately, fate had a different turn. I was asked to be part of a comedy troupe called Abnormally Funny People. And you might recognize a couple of people up there. Uh, we got together in 2005, and we did the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. And then we're actually still, I'm part of the original six, but we're still traveling all over the world doing stand-up comedy. In 2013, I was asked to be part of an anti-bullying campaign, uh, a kindness campaign called Great As You Are. Uh, we are based in Norfolk. My team and I go into schools. We use storytelling you know, as a way of, you know, getting through to the kids and inspiring them. We're basically teaching them to be, respect themselves and to be kind to other people. And we're actually evolving now into mental health and well-being, and we're hoping to go national in, in the next year, so look us up. In 2014, uh, sorry, 2010, I was in Edinburgh during the Fringe Festival again. And I was only up for a week. I wasn't doing a show, but uh, of course, you know, long hours at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. So I was staying with some friends down at the bottom of Leith, uh, in Leith, and I had to take the bus down. It was like two o'clock in the morning. Of course, it was raining, and I'm sitting there at the bus stop, and the bus pulled up. And I said, can I get on, please? And he goes, nope, you're not allowed on. I was like, what? I'm like, the bus is empty. He goes, no, you're not allowed on with that. I'm like, what are you, the scooter? And he said, yeah. And he goes, I go, why? And he goes, because uh, it's got a battery. I'm like, well, it goes on the airplane. He goes, well, what if, it, what if it breaks apart? What if it stops working? I'm like, I'll get off and push it. I mean, the bus was empty, and he refused to let me on. And there was a gentleman with me who actually stayed with me, and he was so great. He was like, I'm not going on if you're not going on. We had two buses ended up coming up, and uh, they wouldn't stop for me. So my, next, my alternative, basically, was to grab a taxi. Well, I don't know if you know this, but taxis do not stop for people uh, with mobility issues, basically, especially if it's raining, right? Because the cabbie actually get out and put the ramp down and stuff like that. So what I have to do when I want to grab a taxi is I have to hide around the bus bench and get somebody else to flag out a taxi, and I come leaping out from the shadows. <laughs> and then I get that look that... Oh, God, the eye roll. Disabled people get the eye roll all the time. Actually, you know what expression I have never heard until I came to this country? I can't be bothered. Oh, I can't be bothered. I've never heard that anywhere else. So the next day, when I'm trying to get back up into, onto Princess Street in Edinburgh, I tried to get on the bus, and we're like, oh, we already heard about you. I'm not allowed on the bus. I'm like, oh, they got a memo. Wanted poster of me in the bus depot. Don't let this chick on the bus. She causes trouble. So I'm like, okay, so I gotta scoot up the hill. As I'm scooting, I see buses go by. A bus stopped. Two guys carrying beers and with a gigantic dog 
got on the bus. And I'm like, I have just been denied getting on the bus. How is this fair? I can't believe it. You know what? It's time to get bothered. So this is where I started the Scooter Girl campaign. And I started sharing my stories. Unfortunately, it was during the Edinburgh Fringe. This was in 2010. And I couldn't get much traction. Uh, we did consult the bus company. And they said, this is their excuse, they said, well, actually, mobility scooters are considered alternative forms of public transportation. Yeah. So there's me on my mobility scooter on the end one. Yeah. Oh my God, go for it. Yeah, I'll be slowing down British traffic for sure. Oh, I'm like, really? It blew my mind. But I tried the best. The social media wasn't all that prevalent back then, so I just forged on. So cut to 2018. I'm coming from Plymouth back into London. I'm in the one disabled space on the train. I've been on that spa in that space for one hour. A and the guard comes by and he starts messing with my scooter. I was actually sitting across the aisle. And I go, what are you doing? He goes, you need to fold it. You need to collapse it. You need to store. I said, why? He said, there's a woman with a baby pram coming on and she wants that spot. And I was like, what? There's a woman across from me who had a child. She's holding, you know, the child. She's, they folded up the pram. But apparently this woman coming on the train didn't want to hold her little vagina trophy. No! <laughs> So I basically got forced out of the space. And I know from previous, this is not right. And I was like, I'm done. I need to stand up for myself. I need to get bothered. And so I started videotaping it. And it was a rigmarole. By the time I got home, I was so exhausted. And I just went into my bedroom and I cried. And I did a video. I didn't edit it. I just put out my feelings. And I just put it on the internet. And next thing you know, boom, for the next two days, I was in Amsterdam, by the way, supposed to be on holidays, you know, doing a little stuff, and uh, <laughs> just saying, relaxing, and I'm just doing media stuff, and it's like, it's, it's super insane. And it was great, because I'm like, well, this grew into a lot of attention. Next thing you know, I'm doing media, I'm doing lots of breakfast shows, all this stuff, and people were keen. And it was all just because I put my honest feelings out on the internet, and uh, it, which was fantastic. Um, so I started sharing more of my experiences online, and I encouraged, encouraged other disabled people. Didn't have to have a scooter. I didn't care at this point. I'm advocating for anybody with a disability or any, you know, visible non-disability because we all need to basically stick together. And so I started sharing my stories and putting them out on the internet, and realized that there's a lot more people out there that were having problems. So it was a fight. This is what I was gonna do. Or like share your stories, but you know, good stories and bad stories. Like, as you know, that's what makes things go perfect. I guess. And um, so I started putting stuff out there, and the train companies were amazing. Uh, look what Tanya Lee's doing for us. She's going to do some training for us. She's going to help us with this new booking assistance app. I did all sorts of press. Uh, I don't know if you realize this. When a disabled person takes a train, we're basically required to book assistance 24 to 48 hours in advance of our journey. Ooh, not a lot of spontaneity going on there. Right. And the thing is, you, if you're traveling with one train company, you either go through their web forms or you call them, and you have to do that through every... I travel like four or 500 miles every three or four days during the week. So for me to book assistance is just, it's super, it's, you have to jump through so many hoops, hoops. And I basically, in this day of technology, why can we not have an app on our mobile phones that says, hello, I'm Tanya Lee Davis. I'm sitting in this spot on the train. Somebody acknowledge I'm here. Little blue light, hello, Miss Davis. We know you're in carriage where, you know, B, if you need a coffee, let us know. We need to be able to communicate through our mobile devices. I've been pushing for this. It's been, you know, oh, we've got this new app coming out. So how's that new app coming, Tanyui? No idea. This is, a, this is another thing that happens here in the UK. Let's talk about all the great things that we're going to do, but let's not talk about what we're actually supposed to be doing. I actually have a report from 2010 that said that all buses are supposed to be accessible, or all transportation, by 2020. January 1st, 2020, they need to be compliant. And I just heard this week that some of the train companies are actually trying to get an extension. Oh, you guys love an extension! No! Oh. What is with this country an extension? I'm going to start the extension rebellion. Oh. Honestly. Here it is, the new trains are coming, Tanya Lou, the new trains are coming. Everything is going to be great when the new trains come. Well, many of the new trains are absolutely fantastic. Loads of space, the toilets are designed better. But many of the trains that I've been getting on lately, you have to deal with this. You got bags, buggies, bikes, and bodies. 
I mean, look at the size of those suitcases. I could travel in those things. Yeah. This is what we have to contend with, and it's just, it's ongoing. People need to be aware of your surroundings. Next time you're on the train and you see designated spots, just give it a think for a minute. You know, don't put your bags there. You know, if you see bags there, maybe help if somebody else is getting on. It's, it, you know, we need to band together with this. So, the app's not happening yet. I have no idea what's going on with that. I've been doing all this press and stuff like that, and I'm just like, all right. The Scooter Group campaign, let's do this, you know, let's get on board. But it's actually started to fizzle now, and I'm just trying to get the word out. Because I'm not just doing this for me, because you know what? We're all going to be disabled at some point in our lives. You know, whether you, if you just have a heart attack, fine, but eventually people are going to become disabled. And this country, the aging population, is advancing very quickly. So it's people like me and many campaigners out there. I've met some fantastic staff members and people on the rails and people behind the scenes and other campaigners. You know, we're all trying to do our thing, and that's why we need to band together. But the problem is, there's many great staff members, but, but they're restricted on what they can do, like because of health and safety. I showed up at a station one time, I had 12 minutes to spare, I sent my husband, go on a platform 12, I'll meet you there. Zip to the passenger assistance, I said, I'm gonna be the pa uh, platform 12, I didn't have time to book assistance. Send somebody over there. I had six minutes to spare when I got to the platform. There's nobody there, so I zipped up and down, and, and uh, I saw a gentleman, I'm like, hey, can you let me on the train? He goes, uh, no. I said, what, but you're here, and he goes, I'm the dispatcher. I'm not trained to put the ramps down. I'm like, you're the one guy that's guaranteed to be on the platform and you're not trained on the ramp? How is that possible? I mean, and I tweeted about it and the executives emailed, oh, you brought up a good point. Why is nobody thinking about this? It's absolutely ridiculous. So we basically, we need to band together. We need to be, get bothered, basically. And so I'm putting it out there to you people. I've had some terrible experiences out there uh, as far as you know, um, uh, appalling behavior. I tipped my scooter one time in front of the London Eye. I was driving along, not paying attention. I flipped my scooter over. I'm lying on the ground. Not one person stopped and asked if I was okay. Not one person asked if I needed any help. I'm like, what kind of society are we living in? It's absolutely shocking. I was sitting on my scooter one day at a train station. I heard this little boy going, Mommy, look, she has short arms. Out of nowhere, this woman smacked her kid across the face like a rocky move. I actually ducked. And I was like, wait, but I do have short arms. Look, <laughs> he's right. Why are you punishing a child like that when he's just acknowledging? And that's what we talk about in Great As You Are. It's like I really respect parents that say, yes, look, that's somebody different. Isn't that cool? She's got a scooter. You know, these are things we need to pay attention to and, and help our feather man. And if my journeys and my experiences have shocked you or angered you, I'm glad, because this country has a big problem. And I have options, people. I'm Canadian and American. <laughs> I've got options, you know? But I choose, because you guys are some of the best comedy audiences in the world, I choose to be in this country. You have a spectacularly beautiful country, and I love traveling it every weekend. But the grief and the struggle and the anxiety that myself and other disabled people encounter when we're traveling around this country. We can put men on the moon, but we can't, you know, extend platforms so that people can get on and off, you know? We can't disable toilets on the trains. They're not fixing them right now because these trains are going out of service. So I've had more UTIs living in this country because of trying to find you, and yeah, you need a special key. Did everybody know that? If you're a disabled person, I guess you wake up one morning and there's a special radar key underneath your pillow. And that opens all the disabled toilets across the country. Oh, anyway, I hope my experience have shocked you and uh, amazed you. But most of all, I hope that they have inspired you to get bothered. Thank you very much, and my name is Tanya Lee Davis. <laughs>